Roads? Where he's going, he don't need roads. Hey, what's up, my peoples? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Warbatron Speed Wheel. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. It's right here. You have Collection Warbatron. You have this little slip thing on top of the box, and we are going to rip! Because <laughs> I'm evil. I'm so evil. And uh, not much on the sides here. You just have Warbatron, Warbatron, Warbatron. No sad Pac Man, unfortunately. You do have, you know, don't let the numbers zero through three make your baby sad. Don't let it, don't let it happen. On the back, you have a picture of the combine mode. Raise the flap up, and you get a nice piece of artwork there of Speed Wheel. And right there is the tray that the figure sits in, Collection Warbatron. And it does have, well, it did have the little pull tab so you could pull the tray out, but it, it, it ripped off. It just, it just ripped clean off. I barely tried it right, right off. But anyway, again, you can slide the tray out. Very nice premium packaging. It's a shame it's going in the garbage. But that's it for that. And, of course, included in the packaging, you get the obligatory third-party collector's card. Again, that same piece of artwork there of Speed Wheel. On the back, you just get that picture of the combined mode. You get Speed Wheel. You get his skill, his strength, his intelligence. And there you have that. So, moving right along. Here we have Speed Wheel, the third component of Warbatron's not Computron. This is their take on light speed. And uh pretty cool figure. Pretty cool. Very red as you can see. I mean, you know, light speed was very red also, so they stuck with the motif. Kudos. <laughs> but, um, uh very cool, very nicely done. You get some silver paint apps here on the rims. You get a little silver here that's more for robot mode. You do get some transparent plastic right in there. Again that's more revealed in robot mode. Nice windshield. You also get some of that gunmetal gray up top. Some nice matte black here. Some gunmetal gray. You get some gold. You get some silvers throughout. Some gold here on the tailpipes. You get some nice uh, metallic red here for the tail lights. You get some more of that gray back there for some of the detailing. So, very nicely done. The robot mode is concealed, you know, fairly well. You can't really see any robot under here, which is nice. So. Conceals the robot mode really well. I mean, it does have a nice little feature here of you can actually raise the hood. And there is a little bit of a molded engine detail. It's not picked out in paint, but still, it's neat that they included that. A little opening hood. There you have that. He does roll nice and smoothly. So that's cool. I like things that roll. Things that roll are cool. Now, for comparison, here he is with a Combiner Wars a Deluxe. There he is with First Aid. Just so you can see how it scales with the current mainline toys. So, there you have that. There he is with Voyager Prime. Again, for a sense of size there. See how he scales with Voyager Prime. And there you have that. There he is with Blast Off. So you can see how it scales with the other Warbatron figures here. Obviously, it's a little bit smaller than a, uh, a space shuttle, as he should be, really. So, we have that. And we'll bring in his partners. Here we have Turbo Ejector. Here we have Hammer Sharpener. I really wanted his name to be Can Opener. I was wrong. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Oh, well. Maybe the next one. Maybe the next one. But uh, <laughs> there we go. So we have the team so far. Our three not technobots. So there to the cool. So there you go. And there you go. He does come with accessories. He has two guns, which are nicely done, nicely molded. You got some silver paint there on the barrels. There you go. They do have uh, two separate size posts. 
these posts are more for robot mode, and these are more for uh, for storage. But you can use these. There, there are actually two uh, two separate points on the car mode that you can uh, plug these into. You have the two ports that are up top right here. For these, you use the uh, the robot mode handles, the longer handles, and those just peg in right there, like that. So that's one option for arming the car. Or you can flip these in to expose the smaller peg. And you can plug them into these side ports right here. So you plug them in there and you can see they sit a little closer to the car with those pegs. And you can arm them like that. So you have options, which is pretty cool. So there you have that. So there we have pretty much everything it does in its vehicle mode. So let's get down to transformation. First, we'll go into its combined mode and then go into its robot mode. Uh, combined mode for this guy is fairly, fairly simple. So first thing you want to do is you just want to come back here and you want to split this rear spoiler, which is a little tight. Yeah, there we go. Split that apart. So you just pecks together right there. And then take these pieces and just swing them around. Like that, and then you're going to take these and rotate them and bring them down like that. So just oh, rotate it and bring it down. There you have that. Then you're going to, well then I'm going to raise the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Then you're going to take this whole rear bumper section and you're going to split it. And bring it out. And you're going to, these are the robot mode arms. Just going to straighten the arms out. Straighten the arm out. Like that, and then you're going to rotate them. <laughs> a little squeaky there. <laughs> so those exhaust pipes are now facing forward. Do that here. And then you're going to take... <clears throat> then I'm going to clear my voice, because it just wanted to go away on me. Then you're going to take this black panel right here. And you're going to raise this up. Get that out of the way. You're going to raise this up, bring this around on this hinge. This piece here is on a double hinge, just want to straighten all this out. And again, cat hair not included. <laughs> just want to straighten that piece out and just bring it down flush against the back like that. Then you're going to take the arms and you're going to untab them from this section right here. You see there's a tab right there. And it just tabs into this little slot right in there. I don't even know if you can see it. You probably can't see it. Right, right there. There you go. That's slot right there. So you just want to take the arms and bring them back like that, and then take the elbows and just fold them down like that. Second verse, same as the first. Just untap that, bring that down, bring that forearm down, and there you have that. And then you're just going to take this front section right here, and you're going to just untab that. No, you don't want to flip up the hood. This part is a bit hard to get off. There we go. You want to take this front section and you want to just angle this up slightly. You want to leave this in its original position and just angle that out a little bit like that. And uh, there you basically have it. There is his leg mode. You'll see the combiner ports right there. And yeah, there's his foot mode. And you know, the, the foot obviously is just going to, it's going to sandwich right in between those two pieces. So there is his foot mode. There is the foot or the shin, rather, of not Computron. So, there you have that. You can store the weapons on it. There are ports right back here. Take the guns, plug them into the back. So, at least the weapons can store somewhere in combined mode. So, there you go. There is his shin mode. So now, let's get down to robot mode. Unplug that. Put that off to the side. And what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Let's just, I guess, work on the legs. Legs, you just want to take this whole assembly here and just bring it up like that. You want to take these little pieces right here, the little clips. Just bring those out to the side, which are very hard to move. They're a little tight. Ah! There we go. Bring those out. Bring that out. There we go. We're going to use those in a little bit. I just want to open up these black panels here. They pretty much already did it for me. And then the legs are just going to extend like that. Split the legs. This panel right here will flip up. And you have a little post right there that will plug into that port right there. 
just line that up, plug it in. And then you take this clip right here and this will plug into the other side of the knee right here to lock all that in place. And that locks that knee assembly right there. Then you take this block panel, just close that up, bring out the foot, flip out the heel, and there you got a leg all done. Second verse, same as the first. Let's take this panel, flip it up. Now you have this bigger post here that'll plug in right up here. Plug that in. Take this piece, bring that up, plug that into the knee, right there, lock that in place. Close that up, bring out the toe, bring out the heel, and there you got the legs all done. And once you got that done, we got to raise the camera. Because he grows. He's a growing boy. So now that we've done that, we can, let's see what we're going to do, let's get these arms out of the way, spring the arms up, like that. You want to take this piece, this piece is on a double hinge right here, you want to bring it up on that double hinge, and this post will just plug in right there, and secure that in place. Then you want to take these side pieces here, and bring them out, they're on a double hinge, and you'll see in here there's a little notch right there, and this will just go over this plate right there. If you have everything oriented properly, there we go. Now I'll just go over this little tab right here and just lock all that in place. Same thing over here. Bring that around like that. Now these pieces, you can do with what you want. There's no real way to orient these. You can kind of put them a little more flush against the back. It's not much you can do with them. Uh, me personally, I, I'll, I'll show you the way I configure them just uh, when I get done here. Um, I'm just going to bring the arms down, then you're going to open up this panel right here, and you're going to flip out the hand, yeah, it's a little tight on mine, come on, sometimes I need a tool, I have the official Warbitron screwdriver here, there we go, close that back up, there you get the arm, bring the other arm down, open up the panel, and flip that hand around again, a little tight. Ah, tolerances, Warbitron, tolerances. And I loosened that screw too, and that's still hard to get out. But there we go. And we have that, these little pieces here. You want to angle those down like that. And then you just open up this panel here, flip out his head, close that back up. And I think we're done. Are we done? I believe we're done. Yes, we're done. So there you go. There you have Speed Wheel in his robot mode. And it's a nice looking robot mode. Very cool. Very red. I ain't got no problem with that. I ain't got no problem with that whatsoever. Very, very nice. Getting close here on the head sculpt. So you can see what we got going on here. Your focus. There you go. Get some little silver paint apps there. Nice blue eyes, and it does light pipe very, very well. Nice bright blue. You get some silver paint apps here on these little, uh, little shoulder guns. And again, very nice design. Very well done. I dig it. I dig it. Get some nice molded details on the inside of the legs also. Some of it's picked out in paint. So, very cool. Very, very, very cool. Now one little tip I will give you guys um, is uh, when I first got this toy, you see there are these two tabs right here and they plug in right up here when you have everything uh, collapsed for, for vehicle mode. This was extremely, extremely hard to get tabbed together and once I got it tabbed together it was very, very hard to pull these pieces apart. Um, so again, tolerances, Warbitron, tolerances. <laughs> The way I fixed that was I just took a nail clipper and I just like snipped some plastic off the top of these tabs and now they pick together nice and easy and I can pull them apart nice and easy. So if you're having trouble getting these pieces tabbed together and once you get them tabbed together they're, you know, you're putting way too much force to pull them apart, just snip some plastic off the top of those tabs and it makes your life a lot easier. So there you go. But still, pretty, pretty cool figure. Articulation-wise, his head is on a ball joint, so you can get some, some wiggly-waggly movement going on here. The arms can do a full 360. They can go in 
It can go in and out at this joint here. Um, again, the, the, the running theme with these figures are limited arm articulation. I mean, again, you have, you have the full 360. You can go in and out only slightly because, again, his shoulders will knock right into his head. And that's basically it. You, know, you do get some outward movement, but this is really more for transformation than anything else. It doesn't really serve that much use. Um, he does have a biceps level. Squeaky biceps level. Does have elbows with over 90 degrees of bend. But yeah, I mean, arm articulation-wise, these guys just really don't have it. You can't really get them in many poses that look good. Because you just can't do much with his arms. But, um... Yeah, it is what it is. You do have a wrist swivel. The hands do open and close. You do get a waist joint. Legs can go forward. They can go back. They can go in and out. You do get a thigh swivel. You do get 90 degrees of knee bend right there. And the toes are on a pivot and you can, you know, move them up and down as well as the heel. And you get a toe pivot there. So there you go. Now, as far as these back pieces here, like I said, there's no real way to orient these in any way where they don't kind of look weird. Me, personally, the, the way I do it is I just kind of leave them sideways, like this. I mean, because, I, you know, I, I personally like seeing that kind of uh, that venting detail kind of poking out there. So that's one way you can do it. Again, you know, you can kind of do what you want if you want to try to get them a little more flush against the back. You can. They're always going to be, you know, poking out a little bit. But, you know, totally up to you. These pieces right here on the shoulders, if you don't like the way these pieces on the shoulders look like this, you know, you can always just flip them back around and tuck them behind the arms. This one on mine's a little loosey-goosey. For some reason, like, it holds up fine, but once it gets past a certain point, it just kind of, you can see it holds, it holds, and then, and then it gets to that point where it just gets floppy for some reason. Don't know why that is, but, again, you can kind of work with that and just kind of move these pieces around. So again, if you want the shoulders looking a little cleaner, you can always orient those pieces that way. Totally up to you, however you want to display your figure. So There you have that. And of course, you can hold his weapons. Let's flip out these pegs right here. You can hold his guns. And you can use the shorter posts for these uh, ports right here on his forearms. So you can give him forearm guns. Totally up to you. And he does have ports on his back also, so if you move these pieces out of the way, let me get this back up, there we go. You can take the guns and just plug them in onto his back for storage, which is nice. Let's take that, let's plug that in there, so pretty cool, you could have them pointing out, totally up to you, but that's cool, you get some nice, some nice weapon storage on this figure. So, there you go. Actually, it does look better. I think I'm going to keep these pieces like that. Because <laughs> they're not really poking out that much. So, yeah. so we'll just give him his guns. Because he's ready for the gun show. That's right. He's ready for the gun show. And these are very hard to get out, too. Tolerances, Warbitron tolerances. <laughs> They're still working on that, apparently. But there you go. Got them all armed up. Pretty cool. Now for comparison. Here he is with Deluxe First Aid. Again, so you can see how he scares, how he scales with the uh, current Deluxes. That. Here he is with Voyager Prime. Right there. Again, a little bit shorter than the Voyagers. Here he is with uh, Leader Ultra Magnus. Leader Magnus! There you go. So they scale with the leaders. Uh, here he is with Airburst. Again, you can see Warbitrons. Basically going for the same scale with these guys. So, we have that. Uh, here he is with uh, Masterpiece Grimlock. There you go. Now some people have asked for that, so. There he is with MP Grimlock. And now we'll bring in his partners here. 
Here we have the man who sharpens hammers. Here we have the man that ejects turbo. And there we go. There we have our uh, our not compu our not computrons our not technobots so far. There you go. Go look at the team so far. I like it. I like it. So there you go. And there you go. So yeah, speed wheel. Speed wheel's cool. Um, you know, like I said before, the, the the one common theme amongst these figures is that their arms are are limited as far as articulation goes. You can't get a whole lot of movement out of their arms, so sometimes getting them into any kind of meaningful poses is pretty much impossible, unfortunately. But still, good, solid figures. Like I said about all of them, these definitely seem like a, a step up from their uh, Bruticus figures. Um, at no point that I, I, I had no point whatsoever messing with this guy where I felt like I was going to break something. No stress marks, no nothing. But again, somebody could jump into the comment section and be like, oh, I got this and it shattered in two seconds. I don't know. But again, as usual, I can only comment on my copy of the toy. That's all I can base my opinion on. And, uh, yeah, it seems like a very good, very solid toy. And like I said, definitely a, a step up. Uh, for Warbatron, it seems like they're they're learning. They still got some, you know, tolerances, Warbatron tolerances, but <laughs> otherwise, it does seem like they have improved somewhat. So, there you go. There you have Speed Wheel. So, if you would like a Speed Wheel or any of Warbatron's other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so do check it out. And you can also check out... The uh, playlist for this set of figures, so you can also check that out in the description down below, as well as my other playlists. And I think that is pretty much it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Warbatron Speed Wheel, and this is M Go saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud. Palm in your face! <laughs> Now, Lightspeed, you strike me as the kind of bot who just loves a pizza bagel, don't you? <laughs> please. Please tell me you do. Please. No, yeah, I love pizza bagels. Oh, oh thank Primus, finally. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, the uh, pizza bagels are those things where it's like uh, meat, cheese, and vegetables wrapped in a tortilla, right? No, that's... That's burritos. No, oh, yeah, I love those. Just, just, just go over there with your friends. Just, just, just go. Just, just go, please. Go. Just, go ahead. Go. Get out of my sights.